come up with me and see the earth from a different perspective, from far, far away. This picture was taken from an Apollo mission as it swooped low over the moon, seeing the earth, the blue marble, hanging in space. What do we notice here? I'd say, first of all, that it's very small. The entire history of humanity, 140,000 years of it, maybe 12,000 years of civilized humanity, allegedly civilized, all has taken place on that little blue marble. So what are our challenges and what are we going to do about them? And where does mankind fit into that? Well, the biggest single challenge stems from the fact that for most of the 120,000 years, we lived in caves, in holes in the ground. If you go into a prehistoric cave system, like in Perigord in France, and I have, you're, you're stunned by several overwhelming senses. First of all, it's deeply scary. Secondly, it's dark. And you imagine back to the Stone Age and primitive man living there, always hungry, mostly in the dark, not trusting anyone outside the cave, scared of wild animals, scared of the people who live over the other side of the valley who don't look like us, and really only being able to rely on the people who would go to sleep around the campfire with you at night. And into that environment, any charismatic leader, anyone who was taller or shouted louder than the other people in the cave, if they presented a solution to channel your fear into hating someone, that would sound pretty good because fear is scary and demeaning, whereas hatred, you can feel really good about that. It's all their fault. So if the leader said they're after our women, they're after our children to take them as slaves, they want our food, they're, they're going to kill us, you would tend to do what that demagogue told you to do. So now, cut forward to right now. What have we got? I would say you can take the men and the women and the children out of the caves, but you can't take the caves out of our DNA. We still look for a solution to our challenges in demonizing somebody else. And we need to label them. They dress different. They have different colored skin. It's completely arbitrary and absurd and also untrue. They are not responsible for our challenges, nor can we solve our challenges by building walls to keep them out. What actually we need to do, and they need to do it as well, is to build bridges, bridges of understanding, to have them walk in our shoes, for us to walk in theirs, and for us to understand that we're all inhabitants of this tiny little rock hanging in space, the blue marble, and we better get on because between climate change, raising the oceans, raising temperatures, the mass migrations that are soon going to be upon us, the present homelessness, the pandemic, which doesn't respect anybody's walls, the nuclear pro proliferation. Do you know that there's no weapon in the history of the world that has not been eventually used? Well, we have nuclear proliferation, bombs that can kill 500,000 people at a time, a million people at a time, in the hands of all sorts of strange uh, actors. So that brings us to mankind, because, you know, it, it really is better to light a single candle than curse the gathering darkness. Mankind is an attempt to say we are not defined by our differences. We are defined by our commonalities. Skin color is completely arbitrary. Let's realize that every single 7.5 billion people on the face of the earth today, every single one of us descends through our DNA from one single mother in Northeast Africa 
120,000 years ago. Google it. We all come from the same mother. Because of the mass migrations, because of temperature, because of famine, as people went north and south, they, their skin color, the mel- melanin in their skin, changed because they didn't need it to be the color it needed to be while they were living in Africa. So white people descend from people who were black, etc. So what mankind is doing is we're saying we have more in common than we will ever have that separates us. So we're saying it doesn't matter what your religion is. It also doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter what your nationality is in. Nations are constructs of human beings to organize themselves. But the enormous global challenges ahead of us and present day need to be addressed, whether it's the pandemic, the rising oceans, mass migration, nuclear proliferation, the depletion of the ozone shield, doesn't matter. There is more that unites us in the need for solutions and in solutions that will be based on empathy and in walking in the shoes of others who don't look like us or don't sound like us. Mankind works at different levels. First, we find heroes, those that we can hold up as role models, people who stood up with the ultimate bravery not to protect their own little group, their own ethnic minority, their own religion, but somebody else's. Because in the end, if we don't stand up for each other, look at the picture of Dr. King leading uh, hundreds of people down off the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma into the billy clubs and and in front of the, the news cameras of the world. Look who's standing behind him people of every ethnicity, of every religion, because he sent them telegrams and said, we could use a little help here. And what was achieved that day with enormous bravery was achieved by people who spanned every belief system and every skin color that we see on the planet Earth hanging there in space. Mankind works also at the grassroots. Homelessness should be unacceptable to each of us. The idea that in a developed nation, a first world nation, we would have millions of people sleeping in crappy cardboard boxes with a a shitty piece of plastic hanging over the top in a rainstorm and who are hungry, that diminishes all of us. We are defined by our weakest link. We have such a vast level of social inequality in our country, we should be ashamed of ourselves, and some of us are, and seeking to do something about it. So mankind reaches out and says to these unfortunate fellow humans on planet Earth, you should not be hungry, you should not be unfed, and here, we are here right now with our masks on, giving you what you need to feel better about yourself, food, dignity, toiletries, single-user homeless shelters. You need it. We've got it. God bless. These are gifts. So I invite everyone watching this to please join us in supporting mankind. Let's build some bridges in a time of walls. Thank you so much.